Just to give you a bit of sense of CME, we're the oldest trade and industry organization in Canada. We were founded back in 1871, so we're almost as old as the country. And we were founded by an act of parliament, so we're pretty unique in that aspect as well. And our mandate is to ensure that there's a thriving manufacturing cluster in Canada. And in the 21st century, that means a few different things. So when you say manufacturing, by default, a lot of people will think fabrication. And manufacturing is more than fabrication. It includes going from the idea stage through the design process, then through the fabrication process. There's quality engineering issues in there. So we're really looking at all of that. And then in addition to that, to ensure that businesses are able to do what they do, we also play a strong role in skills training, skills development, uh, productivity and innovation programs. And when we were thinking of what we could do uh, sort of in the I'd like to be like China and have a five-year plan, but everyone thinks I'm a Stalinist when I talk about that. Um, but that's how we're sort of framing what governments need to do is you need to have long-term visions because election cycles are short and you need to make strategic investments that are going to span necessarily from one government term to the next. And when we're looking at manufacturing, we want to look at what are certain areas that would have the potential to thrive and grow in BC. And one big one that we've been lobbying for for about the last 18 months is apparel. So, and surprisingly, unlike other lobbying efforts, this one has actually caught the government's attention pretty well and government's making significant investments. So it's moving rapidly and I just wanna sort of walk you through some of that stuff. When I talk about apparel, I'm sure many of you are thinking this. You're like, oh, factories in BC don't exist anymore, then I'm sure a lot of you are thinking this, you know, it's all made in China. Very, very far from the truth. BC's had a thriving apparel cluster since the 1920s. Yes, it's had its ups and it's had its downs, but right now we're on a pretty big upswing. So when we started our apparel work uh, about a year ago, we were thinking, you know, there's maybe 50 to 60 companies, and we were building around a, a, what we call the big four, and then we were spanning out trying to identify the other companies. When I made this slide last night, I was like, oh, there's 90, and then Mylan's been working uh, on our team, sort of poking around, and we found five more companies last night and this morning. So every week we find more companies. So by our guess, there's well over 100. The challenge is, uh, there's no apparel association that's really looking after this. So we've kind of taken it under our wing to sort of how we can rebuild this, how we can get all the companies organized so they can move forward. You're also looking at 7,000 jobs, so that's not insignificant. And if you just extract from the companies that have an international presence, there's 14,000 jobs around the world. So again, not insignificant numbers. Just from a retail side, a lot of the, the companies are vertically integrated. They're running strong bricks and mortar presences and e-commerce presences. And so you're seeing 50 stores in BC and almost 500 stores around the world. So that's, again, pretty good. The annual shipments um, last year was $3 billion, exporting to more than 50 countries. So again, when you think of how people perceive the export picture coming out of BC, we're not exporting logs, we're not exporting coal. 63% of the province's exports are value-added manufactured goods, and a lot of it has to do with things like apparel. So if we go down and we pretend we're a customs agent, we pop open a container, we'll see a lot of high value items in there that would be like jackets, dresses, shoes. When you also sort of challenge stereotypes, you know, when I was saying before we, that you think that the factories are all offshore, all that fabrication work is done overseas. You know, there's companies in town that are doing the manufacturing for Eddie Bauer. There's companies that are doing the manufacturing for Kirkland, you know, one of the Costco brands. So we are able to cost-effectively manufacture apparel product here. You also have the higher-end products that have that cachet that comes from being a made-in-Canada product. So we want to see that done on a greater basis. The other neat thing that comes into play is if you look at the colleges and universities that are in town. Um, again, through our work, we've had opportunity to talk to a lot of different researchers and a lot of different programs. There's some amazing textile research being done uh, in wearable fabrics. There was great research being done on machinery and that could be used by the apparel industry. The funny thing though is when you actually talk to the researchers, they're collaborating with companies in Michigan, in Ohio. And we're scratching our heads saying, you've got all of these great potential partners right here in town. How do we get it so you're working with them? So one of the things that we're doing is looking at how not only can we address some of the skills challenges, but how we can address some of the innovation challenges. That's what the apparel industry looks like in BC. It's 
premium and performance apparel. I mean, these are luxury items that have generally high value price points that if you actually look at where those 500 stores are around the world, they're in some pretty prominent addresses in Tokyo, New York, London. Not only when we're trying to build the BC brand and the Vancouver brand and the Canada brand, that can be leveraged on the backs of some very great apparel brands that we have based right here. The other thing I wanted to challenge you is, you think manufacturing. I'm not sure if you guys can read the numbers from where you're sitting, but if you break manufacturing down into its key components, yes, wood and paper are the two dominants. Um, they're in heavy decline. Uh, this year, food will surpass wood products as the number one component of manufacturing in the province. But look where apparel is on that list. Apparel is flying completely under the radar. You do not see apparel talked about by governments up until the last few months. As I said, our goal is to make sure that apparel gets the attention that it deserves so we can push that forward. You know, apparel is 7% of the manufacturing base in the province. Again, that is not tiny. So when you look at the job numbers are projected, so if we're saying there's approximately 7,000 apparel jobs now, just from the informal interviews that we've done in the fall, we know that we could see potentially another 3,000 jobs added to the mix in, in the coming years. Uh, and that's only from a small handful of companies that we've talked to. If we talk to all 100, we think that number would be incredibly higher. And we see those numbers projected going even bigger and bigger in the years ahead. How are we going to get there? Um, we're working with the provincial government and the federal government on something called the Apparel Sector Labor Market Partnership. So we're the project managers for that. And the idea or the goal is to make sure that we, how do we create a thriving premium and performance apparel sector in the province beyond what it is today? So that's how do we map out a five-year strategy? How do we make strategic investments in whether it's skills upgrading, innovation, whatever it needs to be to make sure that these companies can grow and their competitive disadvantages disappear. The great thing about this, though, is it requires a lot of collaboration from industry. And I have to say, in the last several months when we've been reaching out to the companies, there is a strong sense of collaboration. Companies want to work together on common challenges. Um, I think one of the things that you constantly hear is the labor force is small and we can't keep cannibalizing from one company to satisfy the employment needs of the next. We have to grow the pie together and that means working collaboratively together. And so that's what this labor market partnership project will do. Um, we're also seeing government willing to make very significant strategic investments. Um, and I floated an email to the, the apparel companies last night. Uh, you know, there's $5 million available for training, and that's just in the interim to get us forward to once we conclude this labor market study in May, and that will open the door for even more strategic steps and strategic investments in the summer and the fall. So our goal is how can we grow the next 20 Lululemons and Arcterixes in the province. Thank you very much.